let's transform my old prom dress into something that's actually wearable. Welcome I do sewing and DIY related content and today we are going to be turning this old prom dress into something that's actually wearable. As you can see it does not have a zipper. I made this last year and it was actually using a pattern but we had cut this out years ago and I, I think what sort of happened was it wasn't cut out correctly and then I tried to rush it a little bit last year but there's a lot of fabric here as you can see it's gathered. This is a long dress so there's a lot of fabric on the bottom and I think if needed we could probably use some of the top as well. So what I'm going to do is just start first deconstructing this so I can see what I have to work with and then go from there. So first what I did was I went through and I removed the bodice from like the midriff section and then there is the bottom section as well. So I took all of that out so that I could figure out how much I wanted to use for the top. So here's the fabric that I have from the bottom. I did just do a big cut probably about halfway through and I made this shirt recently using some Germany themed fabric that I had. So you can see here that I'm going to have this be a shorter skirt and then up top I want to do some sort of like pleated design. So I'm going to be using that shirt pattern just to get the overall fit for the, the top for how I want it. But I am shortening this since I do not need it to be as long as the previous shirt. So once I had the front panel done, I went ahead and added the pleats to it so they were marked really easily on the pattern and I thought this would make it much simpler instead of me trying to create my own pattern since I already knew that this one worked well and it gave a really pretty effect with the fabric. Next, I sewed in those pleats and then I repeated all this for the back. So I used the back pattern as well, including the little yoke part and then there is a yoke facing so I cut that out too. And then I also, for the back, cut out the bottom portion which is going to have the pleats. So I really wanted this to be more of like a pleated dress to have some really nice flow as I think the fabric would give really, really nicely to that. I thought I was going to have to construct like a whole other panel of fabric so that I could get the facing that I needed for the front as well. But I decided against that and ended up using a mix of like bias tape as well as rolled hems to finish it all out. Next, I started working on the pleats for the back. So this was again, just following the pattern piece exactly. Once I had all the pleats in, it just was time to sew those together. And then during this step, I did also sew the yoke pieces together as well as make it so that everything was connected on the back. This would then allow me to be able to see what the back and the front would look like and I would be able to sew them together at the shoulder seams so I could kind of see what the top of the dress was going to look like, if it was going to work how I thought it would, and all I had to do for this was I pinned the front and the back with right sides together at the shoulder seams of the dress. So luckily since this was a pattern, this is actually part of the steps of the pattern as well, so I'm just following along with the pattern steps and I'll include the link to the video for when I actually made this shirt in case you're interested. So this is what the dress currently looks like, if you even want to call it a dress at this point. Here's the top though, so I'm just going to sew up the side seam so that I can see how big it is. And then I need to figure out some way to finish off the collar as well as either armhole. I'm thinking I'm going to be using rolled hems and bias tape like I mentioned earlier. I also want to have some sort of gathering effect at the middle so I can turn this into a dress. I'm still figuring out how to do that though. I think once I sew the side seams though, I am going to go ahead and serge everything so that it looks nice and neat. I feel like that also helps stabilize, especially this type of slippery and smooth fabric. So I'm just going to go ahead now and iron it out. So this is a word of caution that I did burn the fabric. So be sure you use some sort of fabric protector if you're ironing silky materials. So here I am, I am just now going through and surging everything that had a raw edge to include those openings such as the neckline and the armholes so that they do not stretch as much. So this is currently what my dress looks like. I have both the top and the bottom surged as well as the beginnings of some bias tape for the neckline for how I'm going to be doing that. So now it's time to figure out how I want to join the top and the bottom. At first I thought I was going to just be super lucky and be able to pin all of it together with the right sides together for the top and the bottom portions, but as I got around I realized that no, I needed to have some sort of gathering done as I had a ton of extra fabric. So I did a little test sample and got some fabric and tried to see what it would look like using like a, maybe an elastic technique, so have the elastic scrunch all the fabric together, and I thought it looked really, really nice. So that's what I'm going to do. I got some elastic to see how big the waist is, and I didn't really stretch the elastic too much, but here's how much of elastic I would need. And then I had this elastic stretch all the way around this top portion of the dress. And I'm just going to sew it using a zigzag stitch by gently pulling on the elastic as I go. This will help it to then scrunch up my fabric. So you can see it's working here pretty well. And I just followed this technique all the way around the top of my dress so that it would then be able to fit better inside the bottom. 
I thought that this was going to be a really great way to do it. It would also give the dress a little bit more structure and design since it would now be cinched a little bit more at the waist. So here's what the top portion looks like. I think it actually looks really pretty just as a top as well. So if I went to stop here, I could, but I am going to add the skirt portion to the bottom. So to do this, I'm just going to, with right sides together, sew all of it together. Um, as you, so you can see here that the top and the bottom, and then I am just using a zigzag stitch still since this is stretching and I didn't want the thread to break. So here's what the dress looks like. I think I'm going to add some sort of little drawstring waistband almost to give it like a really pretty bow effect. I thought of using the silver, but I end up scrapping that and do uh, something with the fabric itself. And then I also needed to figure out the neckline, which I think I'm just going to do a facing and then under stitch it so it stays in place. So now I'm just going to go ahead and actually do the hem for the dress so I can have that step done and out of the way. So since I have already searched the bottom, I'm just going to fold this over and do about a 5 8 seam allowance and just take a hem all the way around. Now it's time to focus on the waistband portion. So I want there to be casing. So that's what I'm doing here is pinning all the way around, leaving about an inch tube, if you will, so that I'll be able to get the um, string into it. I also had to go through and make the, if you want to call it string or the drawstring, however you want to phrase it, so that it would match my dress. So here I am just sewing a bunch of the fabric pieces together so that it would have the same effect. And then I folded this over and just sewed this all the way around. I then did sew in the casing so that I would be able to have the loop for all of it to go through. I then got a safety pin and flipped the string that I'll be using so that it would match the dress. This took a little bit of time since it was such a tiny little thread that I made, but I knew that it was going to have a really nice and delicate touch. So I just went through and turned everything right side out. So this is what it looks like. And then what I ended up doing was just for the edges, I just folded them over on themselves so that you wouldn't have a raw edge at the end. And then I got my safety pin and I just put my safety pin with the new drawstring, attached it and worked it all the way through the dress. And here is the final result. It looks so pretty and I think it matches just the fabric so well. I think it helps that it was silky so it was able to slide really through and go through very, very easily. So now I've just decided to tie it to see what it was all going to look like, which I absolutely loved. I think it also gives it a fun effect if you wanted it really cinched, you could. If you wanted it to be a little looser, you could. You really have so many options with it and it really allows the dress to kind of take on a whole new look. Next, I just went ahead and started working on the neckline. So I took that fabric like I talked about earlier and matched it with right sides together and just pinned this all the way around my neckline. So I am going to be using it as a facing as I think that this pr will provide a really easy and clean finish. I'm then just going to sew all of this. So very, very close. And then we'll be flipping this fabric over and then we will understitch it. And that's going to allow it not to be like folding up or coming out. So here you can see though, just a little close up of the drawstring. I absolutely love how it turned out. And I think the bow is a really cute touch. So now I went back and after I admired my bow for a little bit, I went through and just sewed up the facing for the neckline. And then I went again and understitched all of it. Then I just kept it really easy and did a rolled hem for any other finished edge, including the armholes and then the facing on the back. So all of this was just a very simple way to finish everything up, making sure there was really no raw edges. And now it was only time to add a button. So the way that the back is, there is a little opening that way it can fit over your head. So I am going to be adding this really pretty button that matches the fabric. And then the pattern itself, if you had looked at the shirt pattern, called for a little thread loop. So I'm just going to follow that as well. So keeping everything really simple and matching. So here's what the final dress looks like. I absolutely love it, especially compared to what it was before. I mean, before it was something you couldn't even wear. And now I feel like it just has a much more elegant look. I love the pleats. I love the gathering effect of the fabric. And I decided to take it outside to get a little photo in the sun. And it looks so good. It also is incredibly comfortable to wear especially for like a summer wedding guest outfit. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe.